classroom of the elite's most interesting anime adaptation. And season three, episode two proves it. A.H. Brandon, I wonder if he's going to start hating on it. I don't even know if he's a light novel reader, but we just watched another guy talk shit about it for right reasons. Let's see what he has to say. I honestly think Classroom of the Elite might be one of the most interesting or fascinating anime adaptations that has ever existed. Because they're able to cut out 95% of the content from the light novel, but still have an anime that people love. Well, not really... Anime only love it. Light novel hates light novel. You know, elitists fucking hate it though, right? And I mean, I talked about it like last week in terms of like, is it rushed? Is it this, that, or the? Th yeah, it's rushed. It's so fucking rushed. But the popularity is still there, which is really interesting. And pretty much universally, source readers always say this is a rushed anime. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Surprisingly, it remains successful both on anime originals, like anime only perspectives, but also the people who read the source material. And there's a lot to like dive into just that aspect alone, but I think what makes an episode like this so fascinating is I think most people are probably going to agree that this arc went by rather quick. Two fucking episodes and we're done. They covered like volume eight, was it, in episode two? 200 pages? One episode? All right. Two episodes, probably a light novel's worth of content done in two episodes. Yet, at the same time, I don't think many people's enjoyment of the series is going to kind of dwindle down, kind of mm. go away. If anything, people are probably going to leave this episode pretty excited at the idea that Monobu's class now is whatever rank they're at because this girl was about to be expelled and kind of... That's right. What is Monobu's? Is Monobu still 3A? I'm not asking for spoilers, but... With the loss of class points like that, and since Nagumo has all of second years together, hold up. No, well, that's still, again, the competition, Manabu is now relative to, you know, third years, not against Nagumo's second year, so it's, it's not that. I was thinking for a second, like, holy shit, did Nagumo just surpass Manabu and he's 3A now? But it's like, no, he's a second year, it doesn't work like that. Go down with the ship because, well, this boy, he's a psychopathic insanely interesting antagonist yes Nagumo yes is like such a brilliant mind in terms of how he was trying to screw over monobu and the idea of using your entire class's points to save her as you go down where someone like him he pretty much has every second year under his thumb so it's just how though why does he have the entire second year under his thumb I get it if it's the girls, because, you know, he's a very good-looking guy. And maybe second years, maybe there's just a disproportionate amount of females compared to males, right? So maybe that is the reason. But no, we see a bunch of other guys, too. What the fuck does Nagumo have over the guys? I don't know. Why can he unite everyone like that? Beats me. This has probably never been done before, right? And talking about Nagumo's... Hey, you're careful in chat, but talking about Nagumo's methods. So in the beginning, when he targeted Tachibana like that, I thought that he was trying to basically dismantle the framework around Manabu. Not that it really matters because Manabu is hard carrying all these fucking plebs like Tachibana. No hate to Tachibana, but she herself says that she is a fucking letdown, right? Manabu has to carry her, right? So I thought that Nagumo's plan here was, for the long term, we're trying to basically isolate Manabu so that he can take him out in the future episodes. But it's like, no. He was looking beyond that. It was never really about Tachibana. Because by getting Tachibana expelled, he then understood that Manabu would use his points to get Tachibana back with, from the expulsion. Because again, with points, you can do anything in this show with points. And then, again, it's not just about that. Because we also... Sa Nagumo sacrifices his own girl to get the girl expelled. But at the end of the day, it doesn't fucking matter. Because even if Nagumo and Manabu both lose, there's still a net positive. Because again... Second years are all united under Nagumo. His way of doing things is really interesting. I've never met someone that's so reckless. Is this even reckless though? I don't know. I feel like he knows when to sacrifice shit and he's willing to do whatever it fucking takes. It's crazy. It's a little bit of points from everyone. That shit is fascinating. And that's yeah. why I keep so many people saying, this seems like that's going to be a way more interesting art going forward, wherever they're going to go from here. But I think and at the end of the episode, Brandon's exactly right. I know Koji's monologue was, Soon, expulsions every year. First, second, third year, there's going to be a series of expulsions, which is kind of hyping up the future episodes of season three. We're all going to universally say that this was probably a rushed arc, and honestly, I think most people are going to say that's okay because of the mixture of sorcerers telling me that this was arguably one of the weaker books from the series, mm. and I think anime only saying, well, we've already seen relay races, we've already seen tests, do we really need to see more?
Well, what the f okay, okay, we've seen relay races, but the most important part keeps fucking getting off screen. I don't know, Koji's about to go fucking fast and some motherfucker trips in front of him. Then we get off screen. Koenji's like, huh, maybe it's time to work up a sweat. Off screen, this is bullshit. We got back to back cut scenes, dude. Or it's just fascinating that a show that is universally considered rushed mm. is something that continues to get more popular with time and yeah, yeah, I, that's the part I don't get. How does this show keep doing well, right? Is it just the fandom? It, it, you know, the light novel readers fucking hate the anime, but they still watch it and kind of, I guess, support it indirectly. But even if the anime is such a rushed product, people say that because the light novel is so good, the fandom will always stay strong. It, it's just really fascinating, right? That an anime that's supposedly getting such a butchered adaptation remains to be so strong three seasons in. Doesn't dwindle down like so many others. It's honestly a case study that should probably be studied, but honestly, as maybe rushed as this episode felt, I leave. Does that mean that the anime is actually not that bad? Because if you think about it, what other series has rushed like a good light novel, but then the anime was rushed and continues to do this well? Right? What is the fact? What, what, what is the most significant factor at play why this series continues to do well, even though the anime rushed? Probably because the focus of this, right, the core is the light novel. And the light novel is so good that even if the anime is butchered, it still gets carried by the, by the, I don't know, the, just the brute strength of the light novel. Leave it more excited than ever for the future of Classroom of the Elite. Now, I do have a full live reaction episode two of season three over on my Patreon. Check so him out on Patreon, guys. We watched today's episode. It's over there if you're interested. Now, I think overall, this arc, do I wish it was longer? I yes. Mean, seemingly, it's over. I mean, if it's not, I will be surprised. But in terms Bro, they fucking skip like the meditation exam, the speech, ex the speech exam. Apparently, Aaron Koji did an amazing speech. People in chat was like, bro, Aaron Koji's speech made me cry. And now, you guys might be fucking trolling. Maybe there wasn't like a good scene. There's also the T-Rex scene. There's also apparently like a dick measuring context. Maybe they're both the same. So many and like Nagumo and Koenji's, you know, talk about how Nagumo's already figured out Koenji's plan. Shit like this all got skipped. It sucks, but it is what it is. In terms of them going through the test, I mean we got the only thing that really lasted a decent length was the relay race, and we only saw a couple of the people run. But honestly, we got to see Albert run though. I'm you know what? We got to see Anakoji run. Keisei and Ishizaki's bromance is kind of cool. Albert's like family and just running down really fast was pretty cool. But the most important part for me was Koenji. And they fucking cuck us again with the off screen. I don't feel like I needed to see more than they showed me. There's always a couple of things that I feel like do stick out like a sore thumb as an anime only. And some okay. people brought it up last week. We didn't really see like the teams and stuff reformed. Or sometimes we don't see how people get maybe a new rank and whatnot. But I think the idea of just getting through this little test makes sense because I don't see what would have been more interesting for an anime if we would have slowed anything particular down like there's like mm, I guess the only thing that I can mention based off of the videos we've already seen is like the meeting with Anakoji and the second year girl right how the there's a whole setup involved for Anakoji to scheme his way into a 1v1 you know discussion with her in the anime it was only like, oops I dropped this oh I picked it up oh did you happen to drop this oh I hate Nagumo do you want to take him out okay you know it's a little bit rushed like that Koenji again, Nagumo scene cut out fucking the nighttime, you know, the nighttime discussion between Ryu and Hashimoto, Nagumo Manabu. What the fuck was going on there? Anokoji was there too, kind of peeping, right? There's more scenes of what else is there? I guess after that, it's just like, uh, oh, the Koenji and Ayanokoji scene, right? Koenji apparently was running really fast. And in the anime, you know, Ayanokoji has happened to find Koenji in a slaying of boar, and Ayanokoji tugged at Koenji's no shirt. And he's like, oh, ho, ho, so you're the one that took out Dragon Boy. But in the light novel, apparently they fucking was running. Koenji was running really fast, and Ayanokoji managed to catch up to him and tugged at him. And at that point, Koenji realized, oh, you're the one that took out Ryuin, right? Stuff like that. And again, the T-Rex scene and stuff. Of whatever the T-Rex scene it may be. It sucks that shit like this has been cut out. And again, it anime onlys are not gonna feel like it's that bad because they don't know what they're missing out on, right? They have no idea. Ignorance is bliss. But if only they realize all these greatness that's been cut out, it sucks, man. There's also Koji and K back to back. Like a five minute conversation with a couple of people in during the night scene around the midway portion of the episode. And that doesn't feel rushed in the slightest. I think, in general, the character dialogue that needs to be there to keep us connecting and seeing where mentalities are going is always relevant in this show. 
But I think in terms of just looking at it objectively, they like, it feels sped through. Maybe mm. it might have been like that in the source material. And if that's the case, and that's just how the it wasn't. wrote it. But it I wasn't. in general, it's hard to deny that this does feel like a rush production, but it it's not hard to deny at all. It is so blatantly rushed. Again, 200 pages, volume eight, episode two, done. I wouldn't change that. And someone made an interesting comment last week about how, like, if they properly adapted this show in terms of how maybe a lot of source readers want it to be adapted, we would probably be at this point in the anime by like season six or longer. And you know what? I wouldn't even be upset. I, I, my goal is not to rush this series and get to the end game. My goal is to enjoy the journey as much as I can. I don't give a fuck it take, if it takes us to season six to get to this arc. Because that means that season one, season two, season three, season whatever it took there, it all flushed out the entirety of the light novel. Everything that just makes the show so much better. Like, we shouldn't be focused on, oh, it would take this much longer to get to this part of, point of the story. No, 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 no. I think a lot of people have the wrong idea. And, and, and this is the same thing about people that is, um, again, very hesitant against st in starting One Piece, Naruto, Bleach, whatever. Like, long-running shonens. They say that it's a couple, it's like 500 episodes. I, there's no way that I can finish it in time or it catch up. But what they don't realize is, think about it. You're not trying to catch up as fast as you can. You're trying to enjoy the journey. Have you ever finished an anime series that you love so much, you just fucking marathoned it? And then after you're done, you felt like this emptiness, a void in your heart. And you're like, damn, this is so good. I want to find other animes like this. So you search animes just like whatever this anime, right? And then you might find something kind of similar and you watch it. But it's not going to be the same. Nothing will fill the same hole in the heart that the first anime filled, okay? That's the whole purpose. It's about the journey, not about finishing as fast as you can. So if Class of the Elite took its time, and right now in Season 3, if we're still in fucking, I don't know, I, I don't know, in, in, maybe we're still in, like, the second term or some shit, I would be perfectly fine because the journey has been amazing. And I think thinking about what I've seen over Classroom of the Elite, well, maybe there's a handful extra episodes that I would have enjoyed seeing that probably would have killed an anime's pacing and most likely killed the anime's popularity. Would it though? Would it have killed the pacing and popularity? Does it need to be fast for people to grip their attention? I feel like the pacing would still be fine because when I'm reading the light novel volumes, it's like, like shit's popping off all the time. There's so many interesting scenes and dialogue that's been cut out. There's so much interesting other dramas that's happening in this show. I feel like the pacing will be totally fine. Is it going to take longer to get here? Yeah. Are people going to be just as engaged? I would say even more. For a lot of people, because you have to understand the mediums are different. Reading something and watching something are two very different experiences. I agree. I yeah, think sure. A lot of the people who have enjoyed the more snappy nature of watching Aino Koji go absolutely crazy might not be here at season three if it was stretched out longer. Would a bunch of normies that are here just to see Aino Koji pop off stop watching because it took longer to set this stuff up? That is an interesting point where I think Brandon is probably right. If you think about, not, not, not you guys, because you guys are fucking hardcore class of the elite enjoyers, but a lot of people are casuals. They're super normies. They don't give a fuck, right? Like your opinions don't matter because you guys are not the normies. Normies have very short attention span and they just want to see Anakoji do psychopathic things. So Brandon is probably right in the sense that it would have alienated that audience, but at the same time, we would have made the, you know, the hardcore fans happy. Something that is a delicate balance you got to handle. Because if you look at the percentage breakdown of like the normies versus the hardcore enjoyers, there's a, it's probably way more normies there are. So it might be the anime's best interest to appease to the normies rather than focus on the hardcore enjoyers. If we're talking straight up just profitability, numbers, stuff like that not saying the light novels or whatever shouldn't be like that but it is an interesting case study in a way because this probably is one of the fastest paced arcs i mean usually something like this would be like three episodes to get to them going home right but this was two episodes mm -hmm. in and out were done but honestly i don't know maybe it's just me maybe i'm the weirdo but like i don't feel like i'm missing out by being like oh i wish this wasn't rushed like it feels weird and that's the interesting thing about what Brandon's saying, because he's not a light novel reader, and I'm not a light novel reader either, in terms of season three content, right? 
When I watched this episode, I knew that things were getting rushed because many things were getting cut, but I still enjoyed the episode a lot because the anime still delivers on important scenes. Pretty much the most important scene was Nagumo versus Manabu at the end, right? Sure, we skipped like the first three fucking exams and a bunch of other shit was kind of more skimped out on, but because they kind of still deliver on the most important scenes, not to the best it could have been, but they still do deliver, I feel like it's not bad, you know? I still enjoy it to admit but it feels good that they kind of got through this because looking at what they delivered i don't see a lot in this arc that would have made me say mm, i really hope they take their time no I but he doesn't know because he hasn't read the light novel right if he actually knew what he was missing then i would say okay that's your opinion but a lot of anime only don't know what they're missing. If your favorite character is Koenji and you realized, like me, you realize that a bunch of Koenji scenes got cut off, which is super important to the story, I'd be fucking furious. But again, ignorance is bliss. I want to see where they go now because they literally end on such a bombastic cliffhanger in a way. I mean, I know Koji, he didn't do a whole lot in terms of what he normally would do, kind of scheming, preparing, making sure everyone's a-okay. Yeah, what did I Koji do in this arc? Let's think about that for a second. What the fuck did Koji even do this arc? He basically gaslit Kay a little bit more, manipulated her more, made her feel a little bit more, you know, that he's going to save her. We set up the thing with the Manabu thing, so with Nagumo, right? With the vice pre principal, sorry, president. After that, what did he really do? I guess the second year girl too, right? Second year girl, Manabu Nagumo stuff, manipulating K a bit more. It's all set up. He wasn't really just in the trenches doing a lot of shit in this arc, huh? I mean, uh, one dude literally is limping. He has to do a, a relay race. Yeah, that, that could be something. Or, oh, you know, maybe we need to get Big Muscle Head over here to work with us. And he clearly knows our secret. And nothing really goes into a manipulation plot point. Instead, it's just the class is kind of working together as they normally would. So it's kind of interesting kind of just getting to the big moment of the episode, which is they were just trying to screw this girl over. And yep. honestly, it kind of feels like they were trying to do that just because of the, well, I want to see what your face is going to look like. And I think that makes... Is that true? I want to see what your face is going to look like. Was that, my, was that Nagamo's true goal? Uh, I think there was a line like that, right? Did Nagamo actually say that? I forget, but in the anime, did he say something like, I want to see your face like that? I forget. I, I thought his goal was, why is Nagamo doing this? Why is Nagamo being so confrontational to Manamo, even though he's already been appointed the student council president? I actually don't know his motivations. Does he just want to prove himself in front of everybody? Does he want to just show off and be like, you know what? I'm the new student council president now. I'm going to show everybody here how competent I am. I'm going to duel, you know, uh, Manabu and show everybody just who I am. Is he a little bit proud like that? Like that? Yeah, maybe. Not, yeah, Nagama did say that, right? Like, I want to see your face. But it must be more than I want to see your face distort like that, right? There's got to be a little bit more. Or maybe Nagama just felt so like living in the shadows of Manabu before we even got to the school that he felt like he had to prove himself. So him getting on, him getting something over Manabu like this, like makes him really happy. He just bored. I don't know. Nagumo just wants Manabu Senpai to notice him. <laughs> then Manabu never give Nagumo attention. I don't know. I actually never thought about like what Nagumo's motivation here, other than just being a villain, just to kind of fuck over Manabu, just because you know maybe he was living in the shadows. He I don't know. A very interesting antagonist because for Manabu, he his class got first place, right? Like they were fine. Everything was looking a okay. But unfortunately, when you go the down, girls, the girls take someone with you, and that's yeah. like I honestly thought it was going to be him specifically. But it said, no, it's all about wanting to take people out near him and close to him one by mm. one just to make him suffer. And the idea of Aino Koji ending this episode saying that, you know... Which is hilarious. Take people around... Take, take like, when, when he just said, take people out around Manabu to make him suffer, I feel like taking out Tachibana would make Manabu's life easier. Maybe I'm being really mean to Tachibana, but I'm just speaking from the perspective of what Tachibana said. She said that she's a fucking drag, that she's a heavyweight. Manabu has to carry everyone. So if we had less people disappointing Manabu, and Manabu could just fly free, wouldn't it make his life easier? I'm sure Tachibana helps out. I'm sure he does. I mean, she does. From this point on, people are going to drop like flies. They're going to be one after the other, boom, boom, boom. And honestly, it's going to be interesting to see where they go because, I mean, when she pops up saying, hey, you know, would you do the same thing? He's saying, I won't let you go down. <laughs> would you do the same thing? Again, this is a guy that willing let her get waterboarded because, you know, saving her at the end would have made her feel more, you know, inclined to trust him. 
If it benefits him, then yeah, he'll tr he'll save her. If it doesn't benefit him, if K is not a useful tool, you think he ch he'd do that? I don't think so. I do believe that at face value, but at the same time, I don't know, man. Like our boy is crazy, and he wouldn't. Be interesting to see where they take him. I it's only if she's useful. I don't think he loves her. I, I don't think he gives a shit. I don't think he even understands what love is. And he's trying to understand these feelings and sort it out. But right now, I don't think Koji would save K if K was not useful. I don't really think either episode 1 or episode 2 of season 3 did anything that surpasses any of the greatness of season 2 or even season 1. But it didn't feel like a waste of time either. It just feels like, as weird as it is to admit... If this is considered rush pacing, and if somehow it's not, I mean, for an anime only, it feels that way, just in the way of like, oh, it just feels like very snappy, yeah. like we're jumping around different sections or different time points of this arc. But it's like, this didn't feel like it would have been the craziest arc anyway, and it feels like... It wouldn't have been the craziest arc, for sure, but there's a lot of interesting moments and scenes that got skipped over, right? Again, T-Rex stuff, more Koenji Nagamo stuff, right? more discussion between Ko uh, we already said Koenji Nagamo more stuff about Anokoji setting it up for sure I think p the people are even saying that this light novel volume was kind of weak right it was a little bit kind of not as exciting as the future one so maybe it is worth you know, rushing the the volume 8 and stuff like that still would have liked to see all this like T-Rex stuff that people are talking about like there's more interesting things coming up and from what I've been seeing in my comments from last week's video is that the stuff coming up is much more interesting and if something needs to get rushed so that a different art could be well adapted <laughs> well adapted he says <sighs> he doesn't know guys oh no oh no I mean I would love it to be well adapted but based off of the track record of the anime I have no faith I have zero faith that it's going to be well adapted. Is it going to be entertaining? For sure. I and mean, we're going to have a great time watching it. But I feel like the future episodes are going to be rushed. They will deliver on the most important scenes, for sure. But 90% of the content that kind of builds up to those scenes, I bet are going to get rushed. This is the way to do it. But like I've always said, like some people do disagree. Like I've always seen that since season one is that this has one of the more vocal criticisms for its anime adaptation. There's mm. a large section of source readers who despised how rushed despised, it is. Despised, yeah. there's plenty of anime onlys who say, wait, it's rushed? I'd see. Yeah, because anime onlys don't know what they're fucking missing out. And this is the most interesting thing, right? Light novel readers are saying, fuck the anime, this shit's trash. But the anime only is like, what? But the anime is so good. And I am, a, and I am the perfect person, in my opinion... <laughs> I'm jacking myself off here, but... As somebody that was only anime only who has recently started reading the light novel together on streams. I was on the same side saying, Anime's not rushed? What are you talking about? Season 1 and 2 was so good. Then I started to read the light novel. Then I started to get really fucking upset because I understood that there's so much greatness that could have been, but it will never be. Seems normal to me, and like that's half the time me being like, with the amount of dialogue and slow paced moments, I mean, this wouldn't feel rushed to me more often than not. But in episodes like these, yeah, it definitely does. And then, of course, there's the source readers who say, listen, it would take us till season 12 to get to half of these. I'm, I'm fine. I'm, I'm fucking fine. I, I don't care. Take as long as you want. I want more of the show. My goal is not to fucking rush this shit and get to the end. No, I'm trying to enjoy the journey. Points. This is just the way it's got to be. We expect that things will be cut or changed because that's just how adaptations work. But I think the big point to take away from all this conversation surrounding this episode and episode one as well is that this is probably one of the most interesting cases of an anime adaptation being universally agreed as being a rushed, sometimes a rushed mess. But people still love it. Popularity has only increased with time for the anime counterpart. Which is crazy, right? So that means that the adaptation is doing something well. If the numbers are going up, these are objective facts, right? Light novel readers complaining are just opinions. But the fact that the anime is doing still so well, despite a rushed adaptation, they're doing something right. Which you don't see a lot of because usually when stuff gets butchered with how some people are talking about it, it would start not being as popular yet exactly Somehow by season three the show seemingly is getting more popular which just is a testament you know what i think it's the fucking openings 
Zach or Z-A-Q, I think it's all her just hyping it up. How strong the source material is, and honestly, you do have to give props to the anime team because with whatever cutting they're doing, it's keeping the anime fans' attention, so they're doing something right. I'm excited for the future of this one. I think it ended on a pretty interesting cliffhanger, all things yep. considered. Because again, Anakoji said at the end, everybody's going to get expelled. First year, second year, third year, everybody. And I don't really feel like I missed out by not seeing more of the race or the tests or anything else they did. It didn't really feel like it would have been that interesting to see that stuff, but... I mean, I would have liked to see the T-Rex scene. I would have liked to see Koenji and Ayana Koji dialogue a little bit more. I would have liked to see Nagumo and Koenji talk about Koenji's official goal, right? I would have liked to see Koenji actually fucking race, right? There's so many things, but at the end of the day... These are my personal grifts, right? These are things that I want because I'm a Koenji lover, right? To Brandon, if he and the other anime onlys are enjoying the show for what it is, and again, I thought it was perfectly entertaining. Nothing wrong with that. Maybe it was more interesting in the source material because you get all the eternal thoughts and stuff that you can't really get in the anime, but let me know what you're feeling down below. Leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new. Y'all know what to do. Please go like Brandon's video, subscribe to his channel. Again, a very well-spoken person that breaks down his thoughts in a really articulate way and tells us exactly what's going on. And again, I think he's absolutely right that the anime onlys are enjoying so much, which is the most interesting thing because the light novel readers are saying, no, this shit's trash. And again, ignorance is bliss. Anime only don't know what they're missing out on. But the fact that the anime is still doing well and the fact that the light novel readers are saying that the adaptation is rushed, there's some kind of disconnect there. Because maybe this rushed adaptation is the best thing that the anime could have done for itself to kind of get the capture the attention of the peasants, the normies, the masses, right? I'm not talking about you hardcore light novel enjoyers. You guys are going to be pissed off, but you have to understand you're like... 5% of the population. What if there's like a 95% bubble that are enjoying this and are getting introduced to the light novel because of this rush adaptation, right? Think about that. Maybe the anime adaptation is actually doing something right.